Hello everyone, welcome to another Green Dragons Gaming. Without us, they wouldn't feel like winners. Without them, we couldn't look so good. So again, we're based out of Westchester, uh, Pennsylvania, and it's been a while since uh, we, thanks to the coronavirus, since I met in real life. I did have one game, in which case I, I will give shout out to uh, Phil, who's Kazandu, up on the forums. Uh, we tied a 10-10 game, and I had picks, and the thing is, is, I just don't remember everything that occurred with that game. So I am not going to put that up, but I wanted to make sure that I said that um, he, and he, he and I played a game, we tied 10-10. So today, so this is the time I would remember, I was able to get a game in against uh, Pretty Boy, and we're going to have... Dread Elves versus the Kingdom. So Ryan, aka Pretty Boy, versus myself, Sir MC. Now, this I just learned. This artwork here is actually found up on the forums, uh, free to use, and everything else. Uh, uh, and you know what? I, I will say that you got to give uh, props to people such as like Marcos Twenty Four, and uh, there's a bunch of other people that actually do art for the Ninth Age project. And this stuff is beautiful, well done. I wish I knew who did both of these. Um, that's all I can say is uh, thank you so much for the hard work that you do. So we were turning around, we're practicing with our list for, there's a uh, online tournament called uh, Who Ate My Wings, which is put on by um, Alex and Jeremy. I think Alex is really the one who's taken the main lead with this. And you would know Alex. Oh, what the heck is his online name? Um, oh, well, it's it's escaping me. Um, but Schmidt, thank you for doing it. So anyway, this is his list um, for Ryan. Uh, he's got his Warlock Outcast. That thing can be a little bit brutal, but honestly, I, I think it, I like the flavor of it so far. Um, you got the uh, his Dread Prince with that Crippling Frost, which is just nasty. Um, Temple Legates. I mean, the, the, please know, this this army's still in beta. The Assassin, you can go ahead and look through this. But he, he to me, this is a very well-put-together list. Then we've got the Kingdom. This is kind of a take off of my standard uh, list. I mean... I still have my Duke Nukem that hits like a ton of bricks. I still have um, my Druid Master on a Unicorn, but I gave her the Magical Heirloom, and I took the Wafers and put it on the weaker uh, Mage. The BSB is um, changed him since the last tournament I played, kind of going back to my more iconic build. Why? Because I really like Tristan's Resolve. I just do. Um, so he's only got a two up armor and blessing and you can see everything there. Now, why the champions and the aspirants versus musicians? So this way they can charge in with the Duke and the Duke cannot be challenged out. So we, uh, turn around, we rolled for sides. It's going to be a uh, frontline clash, map nine. And he, w I won the dice roll. So I picked sides. He picked, uh, he, uh, Ryan chose to drop for first. So this is after Scouts, after part of his movement, um, just to show you a quick way the board looked ahead of time. And uh, this was the other side. So I'm going to go back a quick picture. So going from left to right, um, you have a unit of aspirants for me, my yeoman, my duke, uh, my realm, my crossbows, my trebuchet, uh, my Scorpion, Grail Knights, and there's another unit of Aspirants all the way on the far end, which you'll see in this next pick, uh, and that's that. Going from uh, his left to right, um, going to go back pick, you've got his Dread Knights with his General. You've got a big brick of militants. Sorry for the unpainted uh, models, uh, but, you know, it's still a work in progress. You've got his Repeaters. You've got his Judicators. His Altar is being played by a Hydra because he forgot it. Uh, and then he's got that, that Fast Cav. So we're playing Spoils of War, hence the three tokens going across. He dropped for first, so it's just a waiting game. So he's going to go ahead and move up, and he's going to get up Unity and Divergence. 
and this is basically how the board's going to look at the end of my movement phase. So his movement's done, my movement. Uh, he was able to pick off four out of six mounted yeomen, leaving me just two. I'm okay with that. I still had two. Uh, the knight's aspirants go in, and he chose. He elected not to flee. Didn't know if that was good, didn't know if that was bad, but he he absolutely, he, he elected not to flee with that, and I was okay. Um, he also elected not to pop his assassin. Uh, during, I moved up all the way on the far right to claim that uh, marker, and the other two markers are still in contention at this point in time. During my, mat, uh, actually... You'll see I did not move my aspirants on the far right because I wanted, in case he tried to do something slick with his light troops, I wanted to leave myself some counter to those light, uh, light troop cavalry because they, they can be mean. Um, I've, I've paid pri the price for them before. So I got up Oak and Throne because I rolled high, and he stopped whatever spell I did next after that. And then he did this. Or then I did this, is I put Savage Fury up on on those uh, models there, being his uh, Dark Riders, whatever they're called now. Uh, then came the shooting phase. Trebuchet did its job. My Trebuchet, I think, took off six of uh, militants. So I'm like, all right, I haven't played with the Treb for a while. I, I can dig it. Um, now I'm doing playing with one Treb, one Scorpion. And then the... Um, the crossbows took off one Judicator, but he made his uh, Aegis save. Close combat, he killed one of my Nine Aspirants. I obliterated those uh, uh, cloaks, uh, Raven Cloaks, I believe. And because I was not up on the hill, I'm like, you know what? I'm okay with this. He can't see me. I can't see him. And then this came back. that spell came back to bite him. You can see where they ended up. Why did they end up there? He was frenzied. He failed the charge. He needed a 11 to get into the aspirants all the way that were on the far. I want to show a, this is uh, the end of his movement all the way down there. He rolled a 10, so he failed to get in. After his five inch move, that's where he ends up. And to me, I'm a happy camper with that. Uh, let's see, he's chaffing my knight aspirants on the left with his character now here is a i did a slight misplay with my own character um but i'm okay with this but here's the one little tidbit of information is 25 millimeters is technically less than an inch and you have to stay an inch away from from the unit so you can't he was trying to have it so that the duke couldn't get into him i'm like yeah but i can go past cut do 90 degrees and then get into them um but we'd already said that not going to be able to do it and that's why he had it going that way the guy kept falling over um and that was that um uh, my turn a after that and again um his magic i'm stopping quicksilver lash not overly concerned with uh anything else that he's casting like uh he'll cast like a he gets off a perception of strength up on that. And you can see where my, on the far right, I actually did declare a charge with the mount, with the uh, Knight Aspirants and the Grails. The Aspirants failed. The Grails, of course, were well within. The Duke makes his march check and is now on the flank. And I'm chaffing up his knights. The reason I'm chaffing up his knights is his knights see the flank of the yeoman. Or not the yeoman, the, the um, knight aspirants. The reason why I did not just simply uh, turn move them is they did not have a musician. But I still think that having the champion rather than musician is the right call for those units. Let's see. Anything else happened here? Oh, the green knight came out to play. And as you can see, the Green Knight is now officially uh, playing the role of Chaff for his Judicators. That's still a big brick of Judicators and decent chance of killing the Green Knight. I get up Breath of a Lady, 
he'd still only have a six up armor save uh, versus that unit. But also a four up Aegis. Um, as I said, that unit got into that charge. Now, there are not so many there as there were a while ago. As I said, he got off um, Perception of Strength plus one strength. So I'm like, I don't, I don't want to go into that unit yet. I want to weaken it. And all I can say is Trebuchet. That tre Trebuchet had a direct hit and it just peeled off the ranks. Um, I think he lost 11 models to the Trebuchet. So Betsy, she did well. That's all I can say. Uh, during his turn, of course, he charges a chaff. Uh, he moves his lord around, and at this point now, he's just, uh, he did claim the middle objective. He claimed the objective on the left. He's trying to get his judicators out. He did make a mistake, and he rolled his march check for the mage, and he goes, oh, I'm supposed to move a unit first and then move the mage. I'm like, yeah, but tell you what, it's a friendly game. I'll let you do a, um, a pivot. He's like, nope, I screwed up. And he just ran the mage right into the um, into the archers. And he is chaffing up the knights of the realm and the green knight accordingly. During his magic phase, he gets off wheel's turn on the knights of the realm because it's a bound item that he has. Puts evil eye onto those aspirants. And that was that. As I said, there's the wheel's turn that allows that. Close combat. I just We just picked them up. Like, those guys are dead. Uh, they serve their purpose. So this is actually the end of his movement for his turn. So it looks like I skip, missed my turn. I greatly do apologize. Uh, of course, I his riders... Um, the Duke charged the crossbows, the crossbows fled. The issue was, is I had already declared a charge with the ground knights. That was a mistake. He fled. And then I, um, failed my charge into his, uh, altar. The green knight and the knights of the realm charged his chaff. They, and destroyed his chaff. That, uh. Green Knight overruns into the rear end of the of the Judicators. If you notice, there's even less right now. The reason why is um, I still shot them because uh, the Harpies, which are skirmish, therefore they do not block line of sight. Even in, even engaged in combat, they don't block line of sight, but they did provide soft cover, so I needed sixes to hit them. I rolled four sixes, removed three models, crossbows are doing well. My, my shooting is on point. It's doing what it needs to do right now. Uh, uh, needless to say, um, during my magic phase, I cast uh, Summer Growth onto the... Um, oh, let me go back. Oh, wrong way, wrong way. I did cast Summer Growth onto the Aspirants. Hence, they are the way you see there, uh, forcing him to charge the rear. Because I failed charge with the Aspirants, which I was okay with. But that uh, forced, uh, that basically, that because I failed that charge, he then um, went ahead and um, char charged the rear, which I was absolutely okay with. Let's see. So during his turn, my Green Knight destroyed the last four of his Adjudicators. And this combat, I knew this was going to happen. As soon as I declared the charge with the Duke, I knew he was going to flee. I was going to redirect. I was going to get stuck. He was going to counter. I was going to flee. I was going to die. It was a calculated risk, but it was a risk I wanted, I wanted at this point. So yes, I know I'm probably going to lose my Duke, and that's actually what happens here. He puts two wounds on me. I put no wounds on him. I just bake, uh, I just flee because of static because he's sitting in three ranks, two banners, charge, flank, two wounds, and I did nothing back. 
So I flee, I get run down. Over here, he completely obliterates the, that unit of five aspirants. Again, I'm feeling okay here. You can see that his general here on the left-hand side is out of position, but the green knight's still there to play. So the knights of the realm charged, needing a six on swift. Uh, went ahead and charged his um, his knights. Green Knight is now playing chaff. He finally popped his assassin, and the assassin is now hiding out. Um, and if you notice the unit of aspirants there, I know I have two yeomen in place, but I still now that I'm building this army, um, I just have to paint up two more of the uh, riders, and then I'll put them on pumas and uh, flock them, and then I'll have my uh, extra two uh, um, knight aspirants, but. Uh, I forgot about them. I forgot about that entire unit for like two turns straight. Uh, the Knights of the Grails uh, charged. He did rally during his last turn with his crossbows. He fled the Knights of the Grail. I made my redirect. And you can see where his uh, crossbows currently are. Here is that charge into the altar. That is an altar, not a hydra. And there's that other charge. Close combat. He kills three. I kill two, two or three. I think I killed three. Um, yeah, because he's five wide. So I killed three. So we're tied on wounds, uh, but I have a charge, two ranks, and two banners. So he's down by five. Uh, so, or he was down by, uh, but he had a banner. So he, he needed a five to, in order to stick. Um, and he failed. I pursued. He ran seven. I ran 11. And that's that. So now he's charging into this, the flank of the Green Knight. That's not going to end well for the Green Knight, but he's already dead. Over here, that close combat did not go anywhere near. I, it was pure rubber lance. I did one wound um, to him. However, if you notice, there's something missing that was behind the altar. That unit failed a rally on a 9. He rolled a 10 and fled off the board. So that just gave me his that his caster and and that entire unit. So that unit there eats the green knight. He starts going, okay, what if I do this? What if I do this? And during my last turn, I actually hit with the scorpion on his general, and I rolled failed to wound. I rolled that up uh, that one. I'm like, oh, it happens. Um, but. At this point, I'm like, this is going to be turn five. If you don't stop, and I'm re-rollable eight, I'm going to go ahead and just simply get out of your um, line of sight with my unit. You're not going to be able to do anything. Turn six, um, I have the objective, and that's it. And I can still march because I still have three ranks uh, with that unit. Um, let's see. So really, it just came down to uh, shooting at this point in time to see what happened. We just rolled it real quick. Nothing happens. We counted up points. Uh, he gave, gave me the altar because at this point, only has two wounds, three more rounds of combat. Should be able to take it out. So ends up being victory for the kingdom. Uh, six, uh, was a was a it was a thirteen six uh, via points, which ends up being a sixteen four. All I can say is this was one heck of a game, had a lot of fun, and we were actually teaching one of my uh, really good friends how to play the game, so I'm excited that he's actually really interested. And for anyone who watches, please do the same. Pull someone else in, show them the game, have them sit down and watch, give them a beer, and that's it. So thank you for listening, and until next time, happy gaming!